I'm here with my wife Deirdre and we're going to show you today how in just two months she increased her FTP by 13 watts. And at first you might think 13 watts isn't that much. It's a 5% gain. Take for me, let's just say if I did 400 watts and I increased that by 5%, 1.05, that would give me 20 watts. And let's say my best ever is 420. If we took 420 and gave a 5% increase on that, times 1.05, it would give me 21 more watts. So, 200, so 440. 5% is a huge jump for anyone. So what we want to do in this video today is show her, show you her Training Peaks calendar and give you, show you her workouts and, and the mindset behind the workouts. Also recovery and nutrition. We'll show you the first FTP test here on Training Peaks. And what I like to do is open up the file, just click the power here at the top on the side, and then scroll down to peak 20 minute power. We click it, so there you go, for 242, it highlights it. And then what's really cool is we can grab it and then see what you did the first, the first 10 minutes you did 244, and then the second 10 minutes you did 239. So you can see here a lot of ups and downs, but this little spot right here as you start to go down, mm -hmm right in all these spikes you probably would have got more watts if it was if you had less of these dips mm -hmm. like you see you're dipping down to 180 and then you're spiking up to 300 like here yeah you spiked up to 300 here where if the whole thing stayed steady like you see these sections yeah and especially here at the beginning. Now, obviously she's training for triathlon too, so you're gonna see you swim and runs in here. Well, what's interesting is that actually, so I had a little break for New Year's for a few days, like planned downtime. Then I got home and I ended up being sick. Yeah. So I had to take almost a whole week off of training. And I was really worried about it. I thought, oh shit, I, I, you know, I'm trying to build my fitness right now. And I just took downtime as recovery and then now I have to take downtime because I'm sick. But what's interesting, and I think that, you know, this goes to show, is that when you're building fitness long term, these little blocks that you have to take off due to injury or illness Can help. don't necessarily decline your fitness because Sometimes yeah, you need that rest. You're getting like extra rest time, right? Yeah. So don't panic. And this is something I remind myself often is, you know, and this is just a perfect example of it. I have a great example of that. I'll tell you a little bit later. Time. So the first two weeks after the FTP test, you start focusing on the running. Then you mm -hmm. take some downtime as we head into the new year. Starting the second week in January is where you start to really ramp things up. And it looks like here, the third week in December, in January, is where this is, this is what's gonna be your regular week yes. for the next two months. Yeah. Fridays are always your day off. Yeah. And so for Monday, you have an easy bike and a hard swim. Yeah. You have an easy swim with a Zwift race. Yeah. And then long run on Wednesday. Yeah. Weights. Yeah. I do my weights every week. That's something straight, heavy, heavy strength training once a week. And then on Thursday, you have a hard bike workout, interval workout. Yeah. Hard. So I'm usually doing that interval workout during the week is usually going to be, um, you know, 30 seconds up to two minutes, sometimes In intervals. five minutes. Yeah. So I got you. So 30 seconds to five minute interval. So you have a hard bike, interval bike, hard swim, the master swim, and then an easy run. Yeah. And then Friday off. And then you do the shootout every week with me. Yeah. And then, ev and then, so Saturday would be your longest day where you do the shootout four hour ride and then run you off the run off the bike. And what you'll see as each week goes on, this run gets longer. What's the longest you run off this, off of this? Off the bike is 10K. Yeah, so you build up to 10K, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, and then it's a base run on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So as each week progresses, you're doing basically the same thing. Sometimes you have to move some things around for you know life reasons. So to, to show us your key workouts. So it's the Zwift race. I don't know if I would really call, I mean, I guess, so there's sort of three bike workouts. It's the, the Zwift race then whatever intervals I have midweek. So it's usually like a Zwift race Tuesday, intervals Thursday, and then my long ride, the which is the shootout. It's still kind of intervals, yeah. but I call it my long ride. Uh, so those are three 
key workouts. I have to get those ones so done. So those are your three key bike workouts, mm -hmm. and they're all very hard. So Zwift Race is hard, uh, intervals are hard, and the shootout, anyone that's done it here in Tucson, is hard. Do you think these run workouts helped your fitness on the bike? I think so, yeah. Gotcha. Definitely. And then so you did... You did so uh, I have two key run workouts, and that would be my long run, yeah. and then uh, my interval runs which I'm just starting to build into at this point. Oh, so here, hello, speedy legs. So I'm just starting to add some speed work in. And you do that on the same day as the Swift race. Yeah, so that was challenging. I remember sure. you telling me about that. Uh -huh. So this is what you stick to week in, week out to the next FTP test. So the first FTP test was December 16th, and then your second FTP test it's is... the 18th. Mm -hmm. And so here we go. So we'll take a look at it. So you can see here at 255, and you can already see how many less peaks and valleys there are here. So you obviously rode this one much better. And for the first five minutes, you can see how steady mm -hmm. you are here, mm -hmm. right? Or first four minutes. Then you start to bump up here and you gotta love this peak at the end. Yeah, <clears throat> that's really different than the first one. Where you dropped off. The first one I just couldn't, I didn't have anything left. And this one kind of that last 30 seconds, I had a little bit in me to be able to stand up and get an extra walk because I was at 254. Obviously the next most important thing is your nutrition. What can you tell us about your nutrition that you think helped increase your fitness? Yeah, so I really, you know, plan my carbs around my workouts. The carbs and protein really. I wasn't too huge on protein because in the past I didn't eat a very heavy protein diet and I was able to maintain good fitness. But I noticed as I'm getting older, I tried adding in more protein and I noticed a huge difference in my body mass. I, I got leaner and then also, um, you know, obviously my fitness is improving. So I'm assuming there's a correlation there. I probably get the most of my protein from protein powder. I have two to three scoops a day and I'll make these protein pancakes. They're so simple. You know, it's just um, flour and protein powder and mix it up. And it's the Vega stuff though. <laughs> it's, it's plant based. It's yeah, I use, a, I use a plant based one. And so I eat those pancakes before my ride, before every workout. If I have a big run, doesn't matter. That's my go to breakfast with maple and syrup. And how many calories do you think are in it? About probably with the maple syrup, 600. So 600, and it's mostly carbs except for that scoop of protein, which is about 20 grams of, of protein. Mm -hmm. Then you come home, you have a shake, smoothie. Yeah, so then I have a protein shake with you know banana, spinach, chia seeds, protein powder, soy milk. So I have that like as soon as I get home. So I'm really diligent about a recovery meal. I don't wait, like I don't do anything. I, I get that in as soon as I can. Then a snack, tuna sandwich. Yeah, sometimes if I ha if I have a big training day or it's like a big week, I'll have I'll make a tuna sandwich um, mid afternoon as a snack. <laughs> so, sounds kind of weird saying that's yeah. a snack. And then for dinner, it's basically chicken, lean chicken, rice, as much vegetables as we can have. Salad. Salad and vegetables. I really like the beans, Brussels sprouts, broccoli and we just steam them or bake them and, and that. And then we and try to- beef too. Lean beef. And then we try and cut the food off. If there's a snack later, you would have- For me, it's just a protein. So I, I'm pretty good about stopping eating after dinner. And then about an hour before bed, I have one scoop of protein uh, with a, a sugar-free almond milk and that's it. So it just helps, you know, repair muscles overnight. And since I started doing that, I lost, you know, like three to four kilos. So your starting weight, say summer of 2021, was about 140 pounds? 139? Yeah, 138, I would say. And then, so through this diet, now about, what do you weigh, 130? Yeah. Okay, so you lost about eight, nine pounds with eating like this. And obviously sometimes you're, you know, we're gonna go out for dinner, have Mexican food. Yeah, like, I mean, I'll have a burger, you know, maybe once a week when we go out to eat, or, you know, sometimes I'll buy baked chips, like the Lay's baked chips, and I'll snack on that, like on a Saturday, when I'm in bed recovering from the big workout day, I'll snack on a bowl of chips, like baked chips. So I'm not like totally crazy, or if we take the kids for ice cream, you know, we'll usually share one or we'll share have the littlest the guy's yeah. ice cream because he can't eat it all. So like we'll have little, 
treats, you have to be careful how much you indulge because it's yeah, so easy, it's easy with especially those with endurance sports because you feel like so I deserve this or like I worked so hard. I burned off those calories, but Plus, yeah. it, it doesn't work like that. I find you need the most important time to eat all those extra calories that you think you deserve is while you're on the bike. And after. Yeah, like immediate, like right around. But it's around funny, you're not day. hungry after, which is funny. You're yeah. usually not that hungry. I have, and that's another thing is I force myself to eat after the big workouts. Like I'm not hungry and I don't want to eat, and I just force myself to to have that big smoothie or. All right, let's so so let's talk about the last two things that are most important, which is recovery. Mm -hmm. So what 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 did you do in terms of recovery that you think helps you? Recovery, um, injury prevention, because I think those two kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, so I stretch every day. I have like a little stretch routine I do. It takes me oh, about 20, th minutes, 20. 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, if I start to feel a little something coming on, like, you know, you know how you get those little pains here and there, then I'll do stretch twice a day for a few days or up to a week um, so that I can overcome it. Um, I do a little bit of foam rolling. Uh, we use the TENS machine. The electrocutor. Uh, we start to feel something coming the on. The thumper, the like the Theragun. massage machine. Yeah, the Theragun and um, then just like rest. So I never took my rest day serious prior to coming here this year, I don't think. Um, so now like Saturdays, I am in bed all day after my workout. So I come one. home, yeah, and I, I get into bed and I just, you know, put on TV or whatever, listen to podcasts, and I force myself to stay in bed all day. I, I won't do anything. Like core work. I know that that's really helped me for my recovery and injury prevention is just doing, you know, mobility exercises, you know, one legged deadlifts with no weight, mm -hmm. core, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I do that before my runs is when I do mine. So twice a week before my bigger runs, I have like a little routine that I do for my legs. And then, like I said, once a week, I'm lifting really heavy weights for my upper body and I'm doing a lot of core exercises then. And that's like a 45 minute of nonstop intensity. Last thing, mindset. What, what, like in terms of mindset, what do you think are some things that helped you and what do you think are some things that hurt you? I think, you know, meditation obviously is one to like help you reduce stress and anxiety. Um, you know, getting lots of sleep, making sleep a priority and that can be really hard to, yeah. you know, mentally wrap your head around is that, oh, it's 10.30, okay, I really need to go to bed because you want to stay up and watch stuff or whatever. So um, making sleep a priority is like really important. Like nine hours? trying to get nine hours eight i think is a minimum is yes. is kind of and if you get nine that's good mm -hmm. in december january even february on the shootout i would never make it to the end with the group and i really had to you know work hard on my mindset not to go negative because it's easy to feel like you don't belong in the group and that you just shouldn't go back and so i just had to force myself to keep going and now I can do the entire loop with the group, right? After just a few months. So I think that's really important for people. If you're riding with riders that are stronger than you and you're getting dropped is, you know, just keep showing up because it's going to make you stronger. Um, you know, it's going to force you to push your fitness harder than you would if you were on your own. And yeah, just overcome that kind of negative mindset because we can all go there and talk negatively about ourselves. Something that's really helped me, and I have to force myself to do this, is the second a negative thought comes into my head, I say out loud a positive retort to it. So an example would be, oh, these intervals felt so, so much easier last time I did them. No, that's not true. You're just talking shit to yourself. You're just as strong as you were. Don't think negative. You're on the group ride. Oh, wasn't this hard last week? Why is everyone kiss, kicking my ass? No, you're just as strong as you were last week. You're just put, taking extra pulls. You're gonna, you're gonna be fine. So like replacing that neg negativity with positive thoughts, it, it really helps me. The only thing with it, it's hard to do. It's hard to, because it's so easy to get this flow of negative thoughts and then to replace it with positive ones is difficult to do. But if I take the time to do it, it really does help. And I've been able to turn myself around a few times by doing that. Yeah. In this sport, we put other people up on pedestals mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, that person's so strong. They must train. They must never get tired. They must never feel like shit. You know what I mean? And then that puts up, brings, us down because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, if this person's never weak and never feels like shit and they're always rocking, then what's what am I doing? Oh, I always feel like shit. So, like I said, just the, the times where I've felt the best and have been the strongest 
is where it was just another day at the office. Got the, got the workout done. I don't even think about any negativity. Another day done. All right, let's go to the next day. And I always have positive thoughts. But I feel like we should give a shout out to my coach too, because maybe some of your viewers are triathletes and are looking for yeah. a triathlon coach. Um, her name is Paulina Allen, and uh, she was a pro triathlete. She's been to Kona competing as a pro, and you know came in the top she, ten. Um, she's come in top ten in Kona a couple times, yeah. Uh, well, as a pro once. Okay. But she's also raced there in uh, as a masters, and um, I'll put her email in the description. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please let us know if you have any questions. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. It really helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video. We'll see you soon. Bye.